you so much. The moment I stepped away from my computer is probably when you called me, right? So <laughs> the Lord of praise offering everyone in your home. Glory be to God. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your holy, holy name. You are holy. We seek after holiness, dear Lord. Hallelujah. Lead and guide us and teach us in the way that you would have us to go, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Anoint me. Anoint everyone that is here. Give them an ear to hear what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Help us, Father God, to grow grow, grow in your grace, in your mercy. Hallelujah. Precept upon precept, dear Father God, teach us on this day. We won't fail to give you the praise, the honor, and all the glory. And we thank you as we come before you on this Bible study night. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Let the church say amen. 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 And I thank you, Elder Maji, for mentioning the black boxes that I have um, is in front of me. Um, hopefully that... Uh, I know sometimes everyone is busy, so I'll be nice. Sometimes everyone is busy, but um, if you can show your face, I like to see your reactions. I, I like to um, know that as I am speaking, that I'm not just speaking to blankness, that somebody's just got their phone on and they're off doing something else. It's Bible study time. Um, let the Lord have his, your attention for this moment. It's not for his sake, it's for our sake, amen, that we may be able to grow in Christ. Glory be to God that we may learn something new. Sometimes hearing the word of God, you may be hearing scriptures that have been repeated in the past, but there may be something new that you may hear on today that you didn't know or didn't receive um, or, or the, if you allow the Holy Spirit to move as the word of God is going forth, the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to break it down to you and within you differently for whatever you're dealing with right now. Amen. So I thank and praise God for that. I had um, one of the senior managers sitting at my desk today at work. And as I was going over what it is that I do, and um, I was showing her a program that I have that made things easier for me. She said, oh, I don't know about that program. She's writing it down. She's, I want to put this on my computer. And she's, she's turning around. She's like, oh, I learned something new over here. I didn't know about this program here. You never know if there's going to be something that somebody knows that they're going to share with you that you do not really know anything about. So you take every opportunity that you possibly can, uh, praise God, to engage and to listen when, especially when the word of God is going forth. Amen. So good evening, everyone. As we press forward on today, how many of you pressed, pressed on today? Amen. We press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Amen. Each and every day we press, we press. Even there's times uh, before I even came on, my body was going through some things. I didn't know whether to call pastor. And I said, no, I'm going to keep pressing. I was going to call my dear. I said, no, I'm going to keep pressing. You know, I did what I had to do over here. I got myself relaxed and, you know, just started reading the word of God. And, and, and the feeling of anxiousness kind of like, left me. Um, I do know I'm going through a few things within my body, but so what? Everyone is. Praise God. That's the way I see things all the time. Everyone is going through something. It's a matter of how you deal with it, how you press forward through it. Praise God so that God is going to be glorified in everything that you do. We can deal with whatever we have to deal with after if that's what needs to be done. So last week we did, we had a lot of conversations. Uh, a lot of uh, our Bible study was based on a lot of conversation uh, with me talking most and, and um, uh, giving you um, the word of God communicating. And I said towards the end, I had a lot of scriptures and I didn't go over some of those scriptures. So I'm going to start off today with the scriptures. So if you have your Bible, have your Bibles beside you. Amen so that you can put your eyes on the word of God. Amen. I'm going to go over a few things and I'm going to read a few things because we're talking about forgiveness. And what we talked about last week is not only forgiveness of how we can forgive, but how we can rid ourselves of the hurt that um, we develop within ourselves because somebody has afflicted us 
with something that they've said or something that they've done and how do we handle it? So of course, you know, I do research and I go through concordances and I, and I could cut and paste and put some things together to go with you. But what I wanted to go over with you is to read the word of God, um, first of all, and we'll see where we are with, with our time. So if you, whoever is doing the um, chat, if you can write the scriptures down, I would really appreciate it. Some of them I'm just going to give you, and some of them I'm going to take the time and actually read so that we can get it in our spirits, okay? Here we go. Ephesians 4, 32. Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Now, if we have no other reason to forgive one another when somebody has fought against us or somebody has said or done something to us, we have to remember that Christ has forgiven us that you know he came here on, on the cross he gave his life so that we would have the ability to forgive one another to live a christian life working towards holiness at all times i'm just my screen here from this light that i have in front of me um so so we have that in ephesians uh 432 if we need to be reminded praise god of what God would have us to do. He says, be kind one to another, be tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Praise God. I am going to turn to Matthew 18. And I'm turning to give you time so that you can turn. And I've written down Matthew 18, starting at 15, because I went over these earlier. And we're talking about the word of God concerning forgiveness. So Matthew 18, starting at 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Understand that the, the word of God has given us instructions. If we have issues with somebody, these are God's instructions. Amen. We are children of the most high God. So we abide by the word of God. And so God gives us instructions so that we can live a Christian life. So we can work towards holiness, that we can work, work towards the love and peace that God has for us. So he's given us instructions as what to do when we run into a situation when somebody has offended us. Amen. So these are instructions. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. He's saying, go have a conversation with this person. Amen. These are brothers and sisters of yours. We should be able to communicate with them. We should be able to go and say, you know, yesterday you, you mentioned something that kind of like twisted my spirit or something, it offended me. Um, can we talk about it? Um, I just want to let you know that, that it hurt me. Um, maybe I'm receiving it wrong, or maybe you didn't mean to say it the way I was receiving it. Can we have a conversation about it? He, the word of God is saying, go to that person individually first. It should be a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Amen. Go to him alone between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou has gained thy brother, right? You have settled just matter. Everything is fine. You love each other and just move on. Amen. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Okay, so the word of God is saying, okay, he won't hear you. He's not acknowledging the fact that he has offended you. He's not changing what he has to say, to even to make it a little softer, or maybe he's angry with you. So he's saying, no, what I said, I said, and, uh, and, and, and now you've got a, a, a little tiff going on, a little beef that may be going on because they're not receiving. So the, the word of God is saying, go get a witness. 
get somebody with you so you understand so that you're not alone to un- in this conversation with this person. So you have witnesses to show that you're trying to go to this person in love. You're trying to make this right with this person, but this other person is not receiving you in love and they're not receiving you in the, in a spirit of forgiveness. So the, so the word of God is saying, bring somebody with you. You need somebody as a backup with you. So they under so somebody else knows it could be the pastor it doesn't have to be the pastor it could be a sister or brother should be somebody neutral somebody who's not trying to take your side or their side somebody who can somebody who can hear both sides of the story and try to come to some be like a mediator some somebody who can come to some kind of conclusion as to whether uh the the issue is, uh is worth uh the argument and whether the issue can be squashed right there is there something else that can be done within the issue and i'm going to be going over some of those details um a little later now that i'm talking about this is breaking this down and i didn't realize how the two even came together but take but he says in 16 but if he will not hear thee then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established and if he shall neglect to hear them Tell it unto the church. But if he neglects to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man or a publican. So you, now at this point, you're rebuking them because now you're, you're coming to them in love. You come with a conversation with them. You came to them in love. They don't want to hear you. So now you come with a witness so somebody understands that there's a problem that is going on. So, so you have a witness so somebody can see that, right? Now they don't want to hear it. Now this issue has now grown to a point where you need to go to the church. Now, who is the church? You can go to the pastor uh, at, at this point and say, Pastor, I got an issue with this, this person who is who won't let this issue go, who, who won't... Uh, uh, see the seek the forgiveness within the situation. I'm trying to seek forgiveness in the situation. So it must really, really be an issue where this person is angry enough that they don't want to hear anybody. So now the church has got to come to him, the church being the pastor, uh, the issue coming before the pastor may bring it forth as a conversation to that with that person, have a meeting with that person, and may come forward as a message across the pulpit as a message, a, a, a Bible study message that may, where we let the spirit of God touch that person's heart. So the spirit of God can move within that person's heart. So you bring the church forth, um, representing the body of Christ forth um, to address this person. If they still don't want to hear it, then, then, then sometimes there's going to be consequences in that situation. That's up to the pastor to decide. Is this an issue that is so big that this person is now causing problems within infecting the entire congregation? You know, does the pastor have to sit this person down? So the, the repercussions come at this point. So the Bible is saying, treat them as a publican. Treat them with somebody that you don't have favor with. Somebody who needs, who's who has to uh, deal with consequences for the situation and the way the situation may be, uh, for whatever the situation may be, where they did not want to bring peace. We're children of God. We should always be trying to seek peace in every situation that we have. If, if, if you offend me, I need to seek peace in that of, offense. I need to come to you. Um, I need to try to do whatever it is to squash the situation so that we have peace between us. So this person who is not coming, not, doesn't want to hear you, doesn't want to hear your witnesses, doesn't want to hear the church, then there's consequences. What is the situation? How bad was the situation that they didn't want to they didn't want to hear it um, uh, in in the instructions that the Lord has given us? See, these are not just instructions that we are making up on our own. This is the word of God. This is what the word of God. We are children of God. God has given us instructions. He said, "Do it this way, in this order." All right. He doesn't say go to the church first. He says go have a conversation with them first. Amen. He didn't say bring witnesses with you first. He says, go to them first one-on-one. -on -one. There is an order here. Amen. So we have instructions from the Lord on how to handle this by sticking to his order. So therefore, the God is telling us in his word, if they don't want to hear this, amen, then we need to put them aside. They, would, they have to deal with the consequences that God is going to be dealing with them um, with. 
Um, depending upon the situation, sometimes people are so angry, they just leave the church. Well, now we got to let the Holy Spirit deal with them because we've come to you. We've asked for forgiveness. We've tried to make amends with you, but you don't want to hear it. So there may be something else going on within that person that is beyond the conversation on which you guys are having. And so you got to really let the Holy Spirit handle it at that point. So as far as the church and keeping the church together, as far as keeping the church in peace and in love, praise God, you may have to sit that person down. Amen. So we understand where we are and in, in that scripture that we are in right there. So forgiveness plays a big part, especially in a Christian's life. Because God has given us order and we need to follow that order in order for us to have the peace and the love amongst one another uh, with, with each other. Does anyone have any questions? I'll try not to talk too much. <laughs> Praise God. All right. So I'm going to another scripture that I have here. Praise God. I have a few of them. Colossians. 8, actually it's Colossians 3, oh, all right, so we have Colossians 3. Starting at verse eight, I'm going to read this to you. If you guys have your Bibles, somebody's writing it down. I don't have the chat open, so, but somebody please handle that. Colossians three, starting at eight, and I have it all the way to seventeen. But but know ye also put off all things. Okay, this is this is the word of God telling us to put off the old man, right? We're children of God. We're trying to grow in Christ. So. Um, God expects us as we grow in him through his word that there should be some changes within us. Amen. Um, so he's saying here, put off the anger, the wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Amen. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man in his deeds. Amen. We're new creatures in Christ. Amen. The word of God alone should make that change within you. As we're hearing the word of God, we continue to fellowship together, come, come together um, to, in, uh, in the sanctuary, hearing the word of God in Bible studies, living Christ, trying to live a holy life. These changes um, due to the Holy Spirit that abides within us, these changes within our lives are just going to come automatically. Things are going to burn off. Things are going to fall aside that are not pleasing to God. It's no longer going to be pleasing to you either. You, uh, you, If you used to lie, you're not going to want to lie. If you used to steal, you're not going to want to steal because you seek holiness. And when you seek holiness, praise God, you want to be holy as God is holy. So these things of the past, they fall uh, to, to the wayside. Amen. So he's saying, put those things off. In 10, it says, and have Put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Man, 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, there's no difference in here, Greek or Jew, that's, that's uh, circumcised, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, praise God, for bearing one another and forgiving one another. There, God is putting that in there again. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfect perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. 
And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Again, God once again giving us instructions, amen, putting off that old man. And part of putting off that old man, praise God, is is, uh, teaching ourselves to forgive. Because when we don't forgive, we are leaving the door open for Satan to come in there and cause problems within our peace and with our love and with our joy and with our communication and with our relationship with our sisters and brother. It is a door that you are opening that is going to cause bitterness to come within your, within your spirit. It's going to be cause anger to come in your spirit. It is going to pull you away from the congregation when you do not have a forgiving heart. So I love the word of God when he puts words, the, the word of God, he, 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 the word of, the word of God is, is rich to me. He puts words together. But he also, what we may think is something simple, um, something, again, that we know, and I know we, sh- we shouldn't do this and we shouldn't do that, yet he reminds us of it. He puts it in his word. He reminds us of it over and over again. You know, the, the fruit of the spirit, you know, these are the things in the fruit of the spirit and the, and the, the, uh, the fleshly things uh, the, that uh, is spoken, I believe it's in Galatians. I always say Ephesians, but I think it's Galatians 4. Um, praise God, the old man, putting the old man, old things away. Praise God. So he's reminding us, us of it. There is no separation. There is no Jew and there is no Greek. Amen. You are all one. Amen. There's no uncircumcised or circumcised. You are all one. You're all one in Christ. And as you are all one in Christ, one of the things that he specifically put in here is having a forgiving heart. We must, again, he's put it in here that we must forgive as Christ forgave you. Amen. If for no other reason that you're going to forgive your sister and brother for doing wrong to you or doing whatever it is, remember Christ on the cross. Remember the price that he paid for you. Amen. So that we may be forgiven. We are not worthy to have been forgiven. Amen. I don't know about you, but we've got, we, we, we've done a lot of things within our lives. Amen. And the love of Christ that he has for us, that he would forgive us of our sins, have mercy upon us and receive us as, as his children. Glory be to God that alone. Amen. Uh, how can you not forgive your sister and brother when you think about how Christ went to the cross so that you had the ability to be a forgiven as well? The blood was shed. Blood had to be shed. Amen. For the remission of our sins, the blood was shed. The final sacrifice was done. All we have to do is accept him as our Lord and Savior. And as Christians that are here in this Bible study, then you're here because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I don't think there's anyone here that is not saved. Mm -hmm. So therefore, God's instructions are for us to follow. And he's constantly reminding us why he understands he walked this walk on on, uh, the roads that we walk. Um, He wasn't just in heaven. He was God in the flesh. He was here on this land. He knew what we were going to encounter. He knew the type of people, man's heart being so wicked. He knew the different things that we are going to encounter in our lives. And one of the things over and over again, he is telling us, you must forgive in order to get this right, in order for you to live a holy life, in order for you to love your sisters and brothers. One of the crucial things is you must learn to forgive. You must learn to let things go. You must learn to keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Elder Fran, my husband had a question. Sure. Long suffering. He wants you to explain long suffering. Long suffering is basically what Christ did. He put up with. He put up with, uh, and 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 the Father still puts up with the sin that is in the world. Amen. He's not slack in his promises. He's long suffering. That means. People continue to sin, even though he sent forth his son. He sent forth his son for our our sins. He's made a way. He's going to the cross. He's made a way for us to repent of our sins so that we can work our lives towards holiness. So he, he wants everyone to repent of their sins. So what he's doing is he's waiting. 
long suffering is just that is long time long and suffering long suffering you're waiting uh so there is love and patience there's long suffering you can go through uh, a situation uh where somebody doesn't like you is pulled away from you but you you still want to rekindle that relationship with them because you love the sister or brother or you're going to put up for a little while or some long suffering while you're you're distant from them until that relationship is rekindled until you can come together again and have communication uh, with this person i'm sure some of you many of you may have gone through that i've gone through it with my my own kids there's long suffering i don't want to lose my relationship with that person i love that person but timing is everything at, at, at sometimes timing is everything where you have to wait you've got to wait for the holy spirit to move in that person's life you've got to wait for the holy spirit to create a situation praise god where you can rekindle that relationship and that there's no hardship um or, or any damages to the relationship you can come together in love in the process of that you're long suffering because you're away from that person. So God is the same way with us. He's given his son. He wants us all to repent. He is long suffering, hoping and waiting for us all to repent. Is that, have I explained that enough for you? You know, okay. Did anyone else have any questions? Because I don't have the chat thing up. Diana Stowski. Hi, Elda. Oh, the unforgiveness, right? Yeah. Now we know sin is sin, and what is good is good, and what is bad is evil. Mm -hmm. But what about when it comes into the iniquity, transgression, trespasses? If you feel or think that something like that has come against you, and you know if it's not good or right or kind or lovely or caring, then you know that something's not right. But what is the difference between iniquity and a transgression or a trespass? Well, I guess I guess they all can be put in the same type of category. Um, it, it's a matter of how you respond to these things. Okay, but there's really no big difference. No, and there shouldn't really be a big difference in our lives as Christians. Or really, because you're going to sin a sin. Uh, uh, people coming up against you. You if if you start trying to weigh um, that this offense is is bigger than that offense um again in my in my notes so you're bringing me right to my notes here I, i'll get to that there are times where you you have to recognize that there is offense and you have to recognize also the intensity of that offense and then you have to recognize the the repercussions in, uh, of that offense okay as we discussed last week if you have a person who may has uh, physically sexually abused one of your children Okay, so that so that offense may be a criminal offense. So therefore, the, the repercussions of that criminal offense will be jail will be time, you see. So there are some levels of offense that you're going to have to. Um, uh, you may forgive that person, right, because God would have us to forgive, you may forgive that person, but you may you may not be able to rekindle that relationship with that person that's that's separate and that's different um uh so different notes that i have here so but as christians we are still supposed to forgive we're still supposed to find peace in the situation love in the situation because we're not counting on ourselves some things you have really, truly, you really, truly have got to count on God. This is a faith mm -hmm. war. This, yeah. You've got to keep the peace that God has for you as a Christian in your spirit. And if in and when hard things and hurtful things happen to not only you and to people that are around you, yes, it makes you angry. Yes, you can acknowledge that it makes you angry. Uh, um, God doesn't expect you to hold it all in and not acknowledge, oh, I'm a Christian, so therefore it doesn't bother me. Yes, it, it bothers you. You're in the flesh. Things bother you. Lazarus died. Jesus cried. Yes, it does hurt. It does bother you. We're in the flesh. Mm -hmm. But now it's a matter of how long you allow that to that 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 circumstance how do you handle that circumstance from there? How do you, do you let that circumstance take over your life? Do you let that circumstance cause bitterness within you? Do you let that circumstance 
uh, fester so that you're not only angry with this person, but you fester from this person to this person's brother, to that sister, to their mother, to their father. You see how it can just fester. It's like poison. Mm -hmm. Bitterness is like a poison. It just, it just, it just goes out mm -hmm. and reaches out uh, when somebody is hurt. So uh, uh, this is where we have to really rely on Christ. We have to really focus on him. We have to focus on forgiveness. Help me, Lord. Create in me a clean heart. Renew me the right spirit. Help me to pray for my enemies because the Bible tells us to pray for our enemies. Amen. Pray for this person that has done wrong for us. It may not make sense to the average person, but it's what God would have us to do so that he can have his way. Amen. You, am I answering your question for you, sis? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, just, I just know a family, and it seems like nobody wants to bother with them because everything that comes out of their mouth, a lot of things that comes out of their mouth, it's harsh, it's mean, it's ill-tempered, it's, it's hurtful, it's offensive. And it's like, wow, that people can live this way and wonder, how come nobody loves me? How come nobody wants to be around me? How come nobody likes me? You know, and I, I feel for these people, and I know we need God, but it seems like they need God more. Exactly. And you and and that's a that's a revelation that you have where I was wondering what is the difference? Isn't it just a trespass? Is it iniquity? Is it a bad way of life? What choices? I, I, know. I would think, Sister Diane, that 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 hurt that you're seeing now, oh. because you know this person now on this level started a long time ago. Hurt, hurt, hurt people tend to hurt. They they lash out. They may have been brought up in that environment. It may be a normal thing to them to lash out. They may not know Christ. We know Christ, so we're new creatures. They need Jesus. They need Jesus to understand that they can cast those kids from the past onto him so that he can give them a new life, so he can give them a new talk, that he can put that smile on their face. Amen. That's why you can say goodbye to their past. We've all had to do it. Um, okay. It may not be at the intensity that you're seeing with that person, but we still had it. You see? And you see it differently now because you're in yeah. Christ. Yeah. But you yeah. may have been the same way to somebody else before God saved you. Thank it's you. because you have Christ in your life now, you see it differently. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. So Thank have you. compassion, have compassion on that, on that family, that person, because more than likely it's something more than likely hundred percent, probably it has definitely happened way before they met you and they have bitterness within this and within them. And, and when people hurt and people have hurt them, especially family members that are still around them who are still bitter and, and they speak bitterness to the kids and to the people that are around them, they become bitter. They have no salvation. They have nobody who's talking peace. They have no one who's talking love. So it's anger, anger, anger after one after another. They need Jesus. They need, they need deliverance. They need mm -hmm. deliverance from that spirit that is in their family. It's, it's there. Thank so, you. so pray for them, keep them up and keep showing love, keep showing them there is a better way there. Mm -hmm. There's no judgment. It's, there is a better way. I, I have Christ in my life, so therefore I'm going to love you beyond the anger that you feel. I'm going to love you. How can I help you? Is there anything that I can do for you? You Sometimes we have to not just talk love. We have to show love. We have to show love. How can I help you? Is there anything I can do to help you? And they can, and being around you as the spirit of God is within you, they, they will then recognize the difference that, oh, when I go over Diane's or I'm near Diane, she's not harsh. She's not talking negative. She's talking love and peace and joy. This is what I want. They gravitate towards that. So they're gravitating towards Diane, but they're basically gravitating, gravitating towards Christ that is in Diane. You see where I'm going with that? You see? All right. He's changed us. I he will change you. have an example to set, you know, and you know, yes. you forget people are watching. Yes. And you do. You have an example to set without even realizing you have an example to set. You just mm -hmm. keep, keep your eyes focused on holiness and let the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will do it Thank through you. you. Thank you, Elder. You're welcome. Is there any other questions? Praise the Lord. Praise God. I like interactions. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Are there anything in the chat, um, Sister Maji, that I need to be concerned about? Because I didn't look. No, Elder Fran, it's just the scriptures right now. Thank you. Thank you so much for putting those in there. All right, so that was Colossians. Okay. Mark 11. And, and for those of you that are late uh, and coming in or just didn't come in right at the time that I started, not to say that you're late, but I'm just saying, I know we all work. Well, what I'm doing is I'm going over scriptures for us because last week we didn't get to the scriptures. And the scriptures in the word of God sometimes just speak for themselves. Mark 11. So if you have them to write down. 25 to 26. All right, Mark 11, 25, I have here to 26. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. You see, so we, we can cause harm to ourselves by not forgiving our sisters and brothers and looking at their situation a little uh, different. Um, I'm glad Sister Diane just mentioned what she just mentioned because it is basically is what is what is showing me is once, once, once was I. <laughs> oh, but amen. There was a time where the people that she's speaking about that has anger and it seems like there's a lot of bitterness because they have no peace, they don't have Christ in life. But such once was us. Really? Such once was us. And we see things now that, and, and think and praise God that God has given us this revelation of peace and joy and love that we only get through him. Amen. That when we see somebody who, who was a mirror to what we used to be, Glory be to God. You say, oh, was I that bad, Lord? Praise God. Because God will put people in your, in your path here. You know, let's not forget, this used to be you. Amen. So have compassion on your sisters and brothers. Just that people had to have compassion on you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. God is so good. He, he kind of like trips me out sometimes. Praise God. We have Matthew 6, 9 through 15. And I wanted to praise God. I was trying to see where I wanted to start. Let's start at six. But when you pray, um, I, Matthew six, I'm going to start at seven. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. But you think that they shall be heard for they think that they shall be heard for much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. Praise God. I thank God for the, the promises of God. He says he knows the things that you have need of before you ask him. Praise God. Let that sink um, in your spirit. The, your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. Praise God. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive you your trespass. Again, instruction. Instruction. Again, 
Jesus has given us instructions, showing you what to pray, when to pray, how to pray. But again, he's interjecting how important it is. He's interjecting that we must have compassion on our sisters and brothers, and we must forgive them of their trespasses, the trespasses that they have against us, the offenses that they have against us, the hurt that they have against us, and whatever it is that they're trying to throw or, or, or uh, the enemy may be allowing them to throw dots at you, praise God, to try to hurt you, to try to bring you back to your past, to try to get a reaction from you um, based on something that they may have said to you. When you know God has delivered you from this, God has delivered you from that, yet the enemy is going to use these people, um, sisters and brothers of yours, to say something and you take it the wrong way. Or you may take it the way that they intended it. But because God has put, we are creatures that are supposed to seek peace and love. Whether you feel as though it's a dagger that they intended, you've got to find a way to turn that situation around so that God is glorified. Are you hearing me with that? Amen. Whether their enemy is coming at you with evil. Look at Joseph. Look at Joseph and his brothers putting him in the pit. Amen. What they meant for evil, God made for good. For good, Their intentions was to hurt him, get rid of him. They were jealous of him. That's their intentions. But, G, but Joseph still had to love his brothers. He still had to love his family. No matter what it is that they did to him, he was still part of that family. He still loved them. He may not have understood what it is that they was doing, but he understood that he had his eyes focused on the father. Amen. He had the eyes focused on what his father, his worldly father had taught him. Amen. So that when he was put into slavery, he still had the, 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 the talents that he was taught. He still was able to go even in the jail. He was able to use the gifts that he had, praise God, even in the circumstance that he had. So no matter what they tried to do as placing evil upon him, God turned that situation around. And that's what God wants us to do. We need to find a way to turn that situation around and not feed into what we feel as though we think somebody meant when they said it. Because we may, they may not have meant it for evil. They may not have, it may have come out of their mouth the wrong way. They may have said something that that uh, offended you, that may have triggered something to from uh, from your past. And you, you all of a sudden you're you're flaring up and you're you're upset about a situation because it reminded you of something that happened in the past where they may be coming to you in love and may have just said something to you that they didn't mean to to hurt you. So it's a matter of our reaction. How do we react to the situation? And God wants us to always react in peace and in love. Find peace and love in that situation, even when they're trying to throw daggers at you. Don't receive it as a dagger. You're a child of God in the name of Jesus. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Praise God. I'm going to receive that in love. I know you probably didn't mean it this way, but praise God. We will find some. We laugh. We smile. We try to do something to bring light of the situation here because we don't want the enemy to, to be glorified. And what they were saying, because we're like, oh, boo hoo, boo hoo, you just hurt my feelings. Well, that's what the intent of the enemy was. Amen. So we don't want to, we don't want to show that and we don't want to uh, receive it that way. We want to continue to love our sisters and brothers, e even when they come out of their mouth sideways. Amen. Any questions from anyone? Anything anyone would like to share regarding, um, uh, forgiveness and, and um, I, I am really truly hoping in the level that we are at coming to Bible study, coming to church all the time, hearing the word of God in our lives, praise God, that we have an understanding that it is required for us to forgive. Elder Fran, I have Sister Denise Johnson and Sister Donna. Um, okay. Sister Denise, go ahead first since I saw your hand first. Praise God. Good evening, family. I'm glad I'm able to join you all tonight. Hi, sis. Yes. Um, so I'll make I'll try to make this quick as possible. I went into a sandwich shop yesterday for Doreen. She wanted and she was very specific and detailed in what she wanted. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I was using her, her EBT card to pay for it. So this woman comes up behind me and she hears me ordering, you know, not, that's, that's enough mayonnaise, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we were having a conversation back and forth. So I go on and grab a few more things. She says to me, you know, you're really harsh on that gentleman back there. I said, well, I don't feel like I'm being harsh. I'm just very detailed on what I'm getting from my sister. So she was, she and I was going back and forth, not in an in angry, but I can tell she was a little annoyed. So I said, well, I'm sorry. I said, I wasn't trying to annoy him. I said, I just want, I'm very, I said, as, as, if someone's eating something and they're specific about it, it shouldn't be a problem. So I, I kind of joked, so I went and I paid for it and put an EBT card. She comes back, she goes, oh, she says to him, do you take Visa or MasterCard? I said, well, if he takes this, I'm sure he takes Visa or MasterCard. So I said to the guy, let me just pay for her sandwich for her. You know, I, so then I said, so I'm going to order your sandwich for you, jokingly. Uh -huh. she, oh, you don't need to order my sandwich for you, sir, because I he said, people like you, I put spells on. I said, not if I had the blood of Jesus all over me. Praise God. And she said, oh, you got the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I was only kidding. I said, well, as a matter of fact, I have some oil in my car, too. If you like some, I can anoint you with some oil. She said, no, no, I was only kidding. I was only kidding. So that being said, um, I thank God for who I am, because had I been in the world, I would have been ready to argue with the lady. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, 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 really, or even back down and be afraid because she made the statement she's going to put a spell on me. But at the same token, when I said to her, I have the blood of Jesus on me, she in turn said, oh, I was only playing. So she knows the power of the blood of Jesus. Uh -huh. And you know, my way of forgiving her was to pay for her sandwich. Her way, her way was to let me know, well, well, you know, you got the blood of Jesus. I was only kidding. So I thank God for the blood of Jesus because it really does work. Even in a <laughs> situation such as minute as that, which what I would think would be minor. So praise God for, for letting me share that with you today. <laughs> praise God. Pe people are something, aren't they? People are people. <laughs> People yeah. are people. There's all types out there. And yes, there's people out there that would probably do spells, do whatever. But yeah, you, you stood up one yeah. with love. You stood up there with a smile. You, you stood up there and, and, you know, and you called on the name of Jesus and the blood. Yeah, she would yeah. recognize that. If, if she recognizes spells, she recognizes the power of God as well. Amen. And okay. if you were weak or if you did not have Christ in your life, that person that she said that to would have got all bound up. Right. They would have got all bound up. Whether she did anything or not, they would assume that she did do something. So therefore, that would have twisted their spirit and they would have got all bound up and they would have been needing deliverance. They would have went home. This woman had said that you got a spell on me. She got to do that. And then when it went to the next person, right? You know it. That's what would have happened, right? This woman had to, and then somebody come up, you know, it, it, it would have just, you know, it just would have multiplied to many. Praise God. So praise God. I, I thank and praise God that you were able to nip that in the bud right then and there so she understands the power of the blood glory be to god that we just pray for her that that the blood will deliver her as well for her to, who, who thinks of that who, who thinks to go to the level say i'm gonna put a spell who, who, who says that bottom line is she knows that greater is me that's in, in me than he that's in the world so she knows that what i have is more power greater than what she has exactly exactly thank you jesus thank you sister these people i'm telling you Sister Donna. Praise God, everybody. I, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful to be on the Bible study tonight. I was on it last week, but I was at work, so I, I couldn't speak out. But I'm, I'm just very blessed and, and, and thankful for God's grace and mercy that he's coming to my life uh, because some offensive things have been said against me behind me, <laughs> between me and a family member behind me moving out on my own and stuff like that. They, some bad things were said to me. And all I could say was, I love you and Jesus loves you as well. And, and he looked at me like he couldn't understand where I was coming from, but I'm just grateful that I have the spirit of God in me today because the old Donna would have gotten defensive and would have, you know, lashed out and said things that God doesn't want me to say. So today I'm, I'm just very grateful that I have God in my life and that I'm able to think and, and um, pray before I speak things to my children or my grandchildren you know, it's, it's just a blessing to have God in my life today and that I, that I read the word and I'm so grateful for the forgiveness because at one time I didn't want to forgive people for some of the things they did, but I thought mm -hmm. about, well, if I don't forgive them, how can I expect God to forgive me for, mm -hmm. for the things that I've done in my past, you know, and who's to say what's going to happen in my future? Only God knows the plan, but I'm just very grateful that I'm able to forgive someone who said something of defensive against me 
Mm-hmm. And still smile and tell them that I love them. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, girl. Go ahead, girl. God, God has been good. <laughs> he's been he's doing a lot of work in me today and yesterday, and I hope he continue to do the work tomorrow. Praise God. That's growth. That's growth. That's 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 what I'm saying. When you're hearing the word of God all the time and you're in the services and you're in the presence of the saints, that's growth. This should be changed. There is change. Amen. And people that don't don't understand the change, they will. Because they're getting to know you as a new you. Right. You see, they don't understand because they're used to the old you. Yes. And, and people, and when people are used to the old you, they react the old way they used to react. So therefore, they're, they're dealing with a new creature now. So praise God. It, it, it's going to do one or the other. It's either going to draw them away and you wait on the Holy Spirit, or is they're going to learn and learn and keep watching and watch, watching and want what you have. Yeah, I'm gonna keep praying for him. Yep, yep. You keep you keep praying and and and, and trust the Holy Spirit. I have been through some issues with with um, uh, my children, with my son, and 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 I wait, and and God always fixes it. He Amen. fixes it because the love is there, and and you try to understand the different generations, what they want, what they don't want, how I used to be, how you how you raised them, and how you've changed. And I just keep my eyes focused on Jesus. I'm telling you. Don't re- okay, love you. And I gotta stay focused on Christ. Why? Because I'm working out my own salvation. Yes, yes. And they have to understand that we're working out our own salvation as well as we are trying to represent um uh Christ. We are still working out our own salvation with fear and reverence and trembling for the Lord, the reverence that we have for the Lord. And people don't know how to be Christians, you know, people that don't know the Lord, they don't know how to walk that walk. Um, but you have to trust in time that deliverance is going to be there. They will be delivered. God will draw them. But there's time for everything. There's a time for everything. So I thank and praise God. I think that you, you shared that with me, my sister. And, and, and I love to see the growth in people as they come and hear the word. That's why I say just keep your eyes focused, focused on Christ and continue to come to church and continue to be in the Bible studies and there will be change. There is the, the word of God does not go out void. It shall accomplish that for which it was sent forth to do in each and every one of us separately, but together. Glory be to God. We are one body. So I'm excited to hear your testimony. Praise God. Is there anyone else? Share. Yes. Glory be to God. Who forgive forgiveness. Sister Rochelle has her hand up. Rochelle, where are you in my squares here? Oh, I see you, Rochelle. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I just I, I just want to make a comment about um, what you had said earlier and the anger in people and how they react to things. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a, a conversation with someone and we were just talking about um, fixing things. And the person fixes things. Uh, they said that they, they were being called to this apartment uh, to fix something and the lady was always so angry always yelling about what she needed to have done and and I let them finish talking and then I said well you know it's probably the way that she was raised first Mm. of all Uh, her mom yelled at her for everything and then she yelled at her kids because they weren't doing what she wanted them to do but the only way they would do it is if she yelled and the person looked at me and said you know what you're right. And, and I, I say that to say, um, in the past, I probably wouldn't have thought that way. Mm-hmm. But being in, in the church and learning to be calm about things, uh, I've learned a lot. And we, we were just talking about that, like you said, last week in the conversation that I had just popped into my head. Um, and hopefully, when this person has to deal with that person again, they can calm them down because what I was told was once she gets her way, she's nice as can be. <laughs> I said, and that's just the way she grew up. That's yeah. the only thing she knows. Yeah. It's, it's sad. I, I think about, thank you, sister Rochelle for sharing that praise God. And I, I think about myself when I raised my children, because I was so young. So I, um, I had uh, my son when I was 16 and I am in my own apartment by uh, late 17, 18. I've graduated from school now, and I'm taking on responsibilities of keeping a job and, and uh, tending to my son at, at 18 years old. Okay, so now I'm on my own. 
you feel ripped off from life. You know, there's a lot of anger that is built up because you, you think about the mistakes that you've made. You think about the repercussions of the mistakes that you may have made by, by early pregnancy, being on your own, not having any help from, from the father. So there's certain things even within your life that can make you angry. So I, I, I can see even within myself that I may have been a yeller. Uh, somebody that's always do this, do that, you know, because it's, you, you didn't have the peace. It, it, you had that responsibility, always that responsibility, the responsibility. And that can cause that same type of, of anger uh, and resentment uh, of things not turning out the way you would have thought they would have turned out. How I would have thought it would have turned out, I have no idea. Because when I think back and I say to myself, you know, if I didn't have my son at that young age, where would I have been? What would my life have been? like i don't know i don't think it would have been too much better so i, I think it, it, it he having him shaped my life as well as with the responsibilities that i had but that's just me that's not for everyone uh but i think about that sometimes that you know if i didn't have him at that young age where would i have been i didn't have christ in my life then so i could have been i don't know doing probably worse i don't know it gave me structure in my life but I say that to say this, I found myself to be somebody that was yelling at my kids all the time. And I don't know if you guys are there were like that, but it's, it was part of being a single parent, being alone and struggling. And you get that anger. It may not have brought up, been brought up that way. That's one way being brought up that way, but also disappointments in life cause that to come out as well, that you may be like that, be like that. So, so as I am older now and I try to be a little peace, they kind of look at me still differently as to wondering why I don't react the way I used to react years ago. You see, I'm a new creature in Christ. No, I don't have time for that anymore. No, speak nice to the kids. So now I have grandkids. Speak nice to the kids. Speak nice to them. We learn from our mistakes as well as we move on in life. We Things that we know that weren't right before, we learn from them and try to change as we grow in our lives and our lives change as we get a little older. Praise God. Any, I love the, the communication here. Any other, um, anything else and anybody else wants to share? I still have one more Bible study next week. I can always go over um, the things that I have here next week. But I love the fact that I started off with the scriptures this time because the scriptures are very, very important. Um, very important that we have the scriptures because it reminds us that it's not my word. It's not pastor's word. It's the word of God. And we do what we do because of the word of God. 2,000 years ago, that blows my mind as well. What yeah. we may think that we're running into is new here. And we're in a new phase here or this is how the world is in 2022 no this is how the world was back then too it's nothing new under the sun jesus was telling them two thousand years ago hey wake up forgive your sisters and brothers you gotta you gotta you gotta incorporate that in your quest towards holiness you can't hold on to grudges you gotta let things go you got to love them anyway. You got to pray for them. Such once was you at one time. I went to the cross for you and for them. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Not just for those that have said yes, but those who are going to say yes as well. And it took a while for us to say yes to Jesus. Amen. And we were not as lovely as we may think that we were before we knew Christ. And now that we know Christ, we may not be as ugly as we used to be, but we still have a journey in our lives to move forward, amen, that, that we don't have it all together. We're still working it out. We're still learning. We're still growing. We're still changing. Praise God. But the, one of the great things right now is that we have each other. We have each other to encourage. We have each other to to uh, to to work with and work this out with. We are a new family. We are new creatures in Christ. Praise God. Uh, I don't know if there's any other questions, but I am going to stop now, Sister Margie. 
I don't know if Pastor has anything that he may want to share. I can continue with this in a different way next week. I don't see anyone's hand up, Elder. Uh, yeah, no, right. So, Pastor, I'm going to yield my mic over to you. All right. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? All right. Praise God. You know, it's uh, awesome. I'm, I'm really loving and really enjoying these here Bible studies. You know, the participation is, uh, you know, so excellent, uh, you know, um, you know, with, you know, the people that are here in the Bible study, our brothers and sisters are, are coming forward with questions and, and sharing, you know, testimonies and so forth. It's really powerful. But I wanted to say, um, you know, um, about forgiveness and um, forgiveness is an attribute that is proof that Christ is living in us. All right. I, I, I really, I really believe that if a person has forgiveness in their heart, okay, it is simply uh, not just an attribute of God, but it, it just a sign that says that Christ is actually living and operating in us. And um, I wanted to also go back to um, Sister uh, Diane uh, Latowski and uh, Elder Fran, you know, truly answered your, your question about the transgression and the iniquity, you know, right on point. Uh, but I just wanted to share something with you a little, a little easy about um, the transgression, because you have transgression and you have trespasses. And pretty much what you have is two uh, different, uh, 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 you know, words here that are pretty much in the same, same category. And it all it really uh, means is overstepping a boundary when you're talking about transgression. And so in other words, to give you an idea about that, God says, all right, uh, I'm okay with you taking one cookie, but you take two. <laughs> Okay, so that's like overstepping like uh, of the law of, of God, if God had put that in as a law and stuff, some people, you know, feel as though that um, as long as they're staying somewhat in the area of what God says, it's okay. So if they just overdo it a little bit or whatever and stuff or just, you know, kind of overstep it a little bit, it's okay. But no, 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 God said this and that's the way that it is. Okay, so, um, you know, praise God for this here Bible study tonight. And uh, again, I'm, I'm so glad to be in here. Powerful teaching, elder, uh, friend, um, you know, uh, when I get big, I want to be like you. <laughs> so praise God. I thank God for all of these elders and stuff to teach the Bible studies because you're really keeping the people interested in it. Uh, you're really you know, doing something with me too and stuff, because I am so blessed to be able to be here with you for the next, what, couple of months, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, back to school. <laughs> to God again. be the glory, Pastor. To God be the glory. Uh, it, it is a pleasure to to be able to sit here and, and share my experiences and, and share what God, uh, how, how I overcome. There's that song as how I overcame. And I will tell the church continuously, uh, keep your eyes focused on Jesus. I don't care what's going on. It doesn't matter. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus and you will continue to move forward. Amen. You will continue to move forward. If you don't, you are going to get sidetracked and you're going to have to start that journey <laughs> all over again. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes focused on Christ for everything. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know, and praise God, Sister Donna. <laughs> praise God. Just keep on forgiving. You know, just keep on forgiving. Again, like I said, it's just a sign of the growth in knowing that Christ resides in you. He's living and working in you. And as we continue on that path, it gets easier, believe me. All right, so uh, praise God. God bless you all. Praise God. We thank the Lord for you, Elder Fran. What a good word tonight. Um, I just, you know, think about what, as I was growing up and growing in Christ mm -hmm. and remember my mom speaking over me and, you know, sharing with me and she would always say, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Amen. <laughs> and nothing annoys your enemies more than when you forgive them. So girl, if you can learn that concept, you're going to be something powerful in Christ. <laughs> And I, it is so true. 
The word of God is true. It's rich and we can walk in fullness. And what happens is when people don't forgive, they don't grow and you mm -hmm. see it, you know, they may not see it, but you see it. They're caught. They're in prison. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just say one thing. This year, somebody came to me and they asked me to forgive them. I had no clue what they were talking about. Um, and they said, because um, you're not what I thought you were because they had listened to other people. And I'm like, it's okay because that's the job of the enemy, right? He gets us caught on one thing. We get stuck and we can't move, right? And then we, like you said last week, out the friend, we tell this one, we tell that one and it spreads. That's what the enemy wants to do, right? And so you start thinking one way that this person's this or that's that, but the power is when we know who we are in Christ and we break that thing, it stops here. I'm not passing that on. No, no, let me, let's go and pray, right? Teaching that to the people of God, because we are believers. We are supposed to be different. And you said it. So I thank God for the word, Elder Friend. It was good, 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 mm -mm, good, as Campbell Soups would say. So praise God. I'm going to turn this over to Sister Denise tonight for the uh, 